Hi, I'm Spat from Spat Cave Studios, and this is Cosplay 201. We're going to show you a slightly more advanced thing to make. Uh, if you've been to a convention in the latter part of 2015, you've no doubtly run into at least one or two war boys or war girls uh, or Morton Joes or Mad Maxes or somebody from the Fury Road franchise. We're going to show you today how to make... Ah, uh, the Warboy brand. This is a silicone appliance. It's not too hard to make. It's a 201 uh, lesson because we're going to be using silicone, which is a little bit weirder and a little harder to get. But other than that, it's a pretty simple uh, technique of sculpting, molding, and casting this that can actually be done very easily in one day. You can start off in the morning and by mid-afternoon have an appliance applied to your skin, ready to go out and, uh, you know, get all shiny and chrome for your boss. First thing you're going to need is something to sculpt on. Uh, what I like to do is get these Formica boards from Home Depot. They're smooth, they're easy to use, uh, nothing really sticks to it because it's super smooth, so you don't have to worry about a release very often. These are my sculptures. That's from the future. We haven't gotten there yet. You can get them almost anywhere. These are fantastic for sculpting. I highly recommend them. The next thing you're going to need is clay. Clay comes basically in two categories, oil-based or water-based. Water-based clay is something that I usually use for the big things, the monster suits, the big masks, the things that need a lot of, you know, mass as opposed to a lot of detail. We'll get into water-based clays in a future episode. I'm going to keep this one on oil-based clay, which is what I use for these guys. These are all sculpted in oil-based clay. Oil-based clay comes in two different categories, uh, sulfur-free or, I guess, sulfur-full. I'm not sure what the opposite of sulfur-free is. Um... Sulfur-free clay is what you want to use when you're working with silicones. If at any point in the process you think you're going to be using silicone, which we are, I would recommend sticking with sulfur-free clay. The sulfur reacts badly with silicone, causing it not to cure. It doesn't blow up or anything, it just won't cure. So you don't want to have any silicone uh, anywhere near sulfur-based items. So make sure you use sulfur-free clay if you're going to use silicone. I just find it easier whenever I buy oil-based clay, I just buy sulfur-free. This way I never have to worry about my clay reacting with anything. If you only have sulfur-full clay, uh, and you need to use it with silicone, you can seal it with an enamel uh, spray paint or a clear coat or something, some kind of barrier that's going to prevent the sulfur from mixing with the silicone. That will give you uh, a chance of getting your pull. I don't suggest it unless you absolutely have to. Otherwise, always try and get sulfur-free clay. The next thing you're going to need, sculpting tools. You can go out and buy all these super expensive and really nice sculpting tools. Uh, they're great. They're fantastic. Each one has its own unique job. I find that 99% of the time there's maybe two or three of these that I use for everything and everything else I use a popsicle stick. It's just the way I do it. And you, you'll find as you're working with these, you know, some of these tools will just never get used. Um, some of them you'll use continuously. Another thing that you're always going to need that I love are sponges. You can use sponges for cleaning up your area, for getting everything ready, and also in place of texture stamps. Texture stamps are these wonderful little guys. They used to be made out of rubber, now they're silicone. They're little stamps that have little textures printed on them. Uh, all different ones and all wacky ones. They're skin tones, scales, rock things, all different kinds of textures. They're fantastic. You take them, you press them into your clay, and they give you that impression of whatever texture you're trying to get. Do you need it? For most things, no. You can sculpt them in. Or like I said, for skin texture, if it's a creature, I'll usually use a wider or more porous sponge. For a human skin, I'll usually use one of these smaller sponges. That's the easiest way for me. But to each their own, this is something that you'll pick up. And another thing that you're definitely going to need when working with oil-based clays is Vaseline. Uh, this is what I use to smooth it out, to get rid of that rough edge and give it that more natural texture. Uh, it's what you use to smooth out oil-based clays. Uh, you'll notice in the video that's coming up, I, I like to take a big glob of it and leave it on the sculpting surface so I can just dip my finger in it whenever I need. Take that as you will. Uh, the next question is, how do you sculpt? That I can't really tell you. Years ago, I used to hire a sculptor and have him do all my work for me because I didn't think I was a strong enough sculptor. And one day, of course, he wasn't around when I needed something done. And so I had to sit down and teach myself to learn how to sculpt. And, uh, it took eight years, I'd say, since then to really say that I'm comfortable with sculpting, where I can, you know, get anything and make whatever I need. This is not something you're going to be able to pick up overnight, or maybe you are, and I'll hate you because you're one of those people. But 
with practice, you can sculpt this. This is not hard. This is not a difficult thing. Remember, the clay is reusable. If you don't like what you're doing, scoop it all up, start over again. It's not difficult. It's not going to cost anything. It's just clay. All right, so once your sculpture is done, the next thing to do is make a mold. Um, and the molds can be made out of a lot of different things. Generally, when you're making something in a soft material, like the clay, which is technically soft, um, you want to make a mold of it in something that's hard, like plaster. If you're sculpting a rigid thing, if you're carving something out of a block of resin, and you want to make a mold of that, that's something that's hard, so you want to make a soft mold, which would usually be silicone. Um, there are rules, and the rules can always be broken. There's always a way around it. The plaster that you're going to use is going to depend on what you want to use it for. The main plaster that I probably use is Plaster of Paris. Uh, these 20 pound bags are at Home Depot are like $15, $20, I think. You can also go to an art supply store or a model shop and they'll sell you a box of Plaster of Paris that weighs about a pound for like $10 or $15 anyway. So you're much better off getting the bag. You're much, much better off getting the bag. It's super light, which is actually good. It cures really fast, which is really good, but it ends up staying brittle, especially when you're baking it. If you're gonna use it in the oven, future episodes, don't worry, we'll get to it. Um, it's fragile, it will shatter if you drop it, but then again, so will most plasters. If you're gonna be doing something that needs a little bit more work, the next step up is Hydrocal, which is uh, the plaster mainly used for making dental molds. Uh, dentists always have it, you can always buy some off your dentist usually, that's how I used to get some. Uh, Hydrocal has a longer cure time, doesn't cure very fast, but cures very strong, can handle high heat, um, it's good. It's a little bit more expensive than Plaster of Paris. It's nice stuff. I don't really use it very often. Uh, the best of the best is UltraCal 30. It dries to a stone-like substance. It's super strong. Handles heat. Cures relatively fast. Not as fast as Plaster of Paris, but faster than HydroCal. Uh, it's, it's a great material. Um, if I'm doing something that I know I'm going to do multiple castings out of, or I need something that's a weird shape that I know I'm going to be prying them open and putting a lot of stress on them, I'll either do them in fiberglass or I'll do them in UltraCal. Uh, but for this, I'm probably going to use Plaster of Paris because it's just cheap. It's easy. These are quickie things. You're going to build up a little clay wall just to keep the plaster in. Mix them up. You got little mixing containers you can use or a plastic cup. It's not a lot of plaster for this project. Mix it with water. I didn't bring any water to show you. I assume you know what water looks like and where to get it. Um, mix it. How do you mix plaster? Pour it with the water into a cup. Pour some plaster in until it's absorbed. Just a little bit of plaster at a time until it kind of makes islands and floats. And then mix it around. You want it the consistency of... Uh, not quite water, but not quite mud, somewhere in between, and you want to brush it in there, get a nice little brush. Grab some of these chip brushes, they're fantastic, they're like a dollar each at most stores. Use this to brush it into the pieces, make sure you get it all in there. The nice part about the, uh, the clay is that once it's cured, once it's been out sitting for a while, even your finger, if you press lightly, isn't going to do anything to it. So give it a little brush with it, it's not going to make any marks on it, you should be okay. Brush it in, make sure you get rid of all the air bubbles, you don't want any air bubbles in there, and then fill it in the rest of the way with the rest of the plaster, and let it sit. How long do you let it sit? That depends. Uh, plaster power is probably about an hour, I would say, just to let it go. The way to be able to, sh to check to make sure, as the plaster cures, so it gives off heat. So you'll feel it, if it feels hot, it's still curing. Once it cools back down, then it's usually ready, give it about another 15-20 minutes, you're ready to open it up. Pop the mold open, flip it over, any clay that's stuck in, scrape out, and you'll be all set and ready to start casting. All right, so once your mold is made and it's ready to go, the next thing we're going to be doing is actually making the casting. Now, what I'm going to use is a material here called Dragon Skin Ooh, from Smooth On. It's a two-part material. This is, of course, part one. There's clay stuck to the bottom, clay stuck to everything in my shop. Um, Dragon Skin FX Pro, which is the brand that I like, they come in, I think, three or four different types of Dragon Skin. This one cures the fastest. I think the cure time is like 20 minutes. Uh, if it's your first time doing it, you might want to get like a sample pack of the Dragon Skin Slow or the Dragon Skin Regular, whatever it is. That's like an hour cure time. You'll have more time to play with it and finesse it. I like it to be done as quickly as possible because I'm that kind of guy. Uh, I actually even take this stuff and I mix in a hardener, which is... Thivex or Tyvek, T H I. It's supposed to be thickener, so I'm assuming it's pronounced Thivex, Thixotropic agent. I don't know. Uh, it will harden the silicone to make it a little bit more rigid so that it's not all floppy and gooey. 
when it's cured, and it also makes it cure a lot faster. So I like to use a couple of drops of this. Don't go crazy. If you put too much in a small amount of silicone, it will cause it not to cure as well. So you have to be careful. A couple of drops with a little bit of silicone, you're all set. For mixing, especially these small amounts, we use little tiny cups. Those are easy enough to get. Stir sticks, popsicle sticks, fantastic stuff. Mix it up. If you want to add a little tint, uh, Smooth On makes the Silk Pigs. I didn't come up with the name. Silk Pig is a silicone pigment, and it's called Silk Pig for some reason. Uh, they come in multiple different colors in all different ways. This is a little sampler pack. You need the tiniest bit of color, especially for an amount this small. If you're doing one piece or a couple of piece appliances, the tiniest bit of tint will tint the whole batch perfectly. You want it semi-translucent. You don't really want to put too much color, or you do. I don't care. It's up to you. It's your piece. I don't know. I'm not, not micromanaging here. Once you're done, you, once you get it all in there, scoop it all in there with your popsicle stick. Get it all nice and smooth in there. You don't want it too thick. You want the edges to be a little smoothed around because you don't want to have this big piece that you then have to compensate for later, which we'll get to. It's a great material. And once... So, in 20 minutes or an hour or however long your silicone takes to cure, you'll have a nice little appliance ready to go with some flash on the edges, as you can see. Uh, the best way to get rid of this, I find... Grab it with your fingers, tight to the piece you want to save, and just give it a little peel. And just peel out all the excess bits this way. If you use a scissor and cut it, you'll end up with a really sharp, hard edge that'll look a little odd. Because remember, this is supposed to be an organic thing. It's a blistered burn that's on someone's skin. So a really hard, straight edge on it would look a little odd. These little raggedy bits, that's perfect. That's exactly what you want. All right, now it's time for application. What we're going to use to apply this is a thing called spirit gum. No, I'm just kidding. Don't use spirit gum. Why does everybody keep using spirit gum? Spirit gum is a resin that's used for gluing hair to each other. You don't ever want to use it on a soft appliance. It's really rigid and annoying. Don't use spirit gum. Um, for latex appliances, you want a latex-based material. For silicone-based appliances, you want a silicone-based material. That's the way it works. That's the rule. There are silicone-based glues. You can also, if you're really desperate, use caulk from Home Depot, but I don't recommend that. It's very, very bad. What I like... Smooth On makes a material called Skin Tight. It is a two-part silicone that is made to sculpt uh, appliances. So you can actually sculpt wounds and scars and burns just from the Skin Tight, but you can also use it as a glue to attach uh, silicone appliances to your skin. Fantastic material. 1-1 uh, one -one ratio mix. Mix it up in the cup. You can thicken it with some Thivex, Thivex, Thiv whatever the hell this is called. You can also tint it with your Silk Pig. Uh, I don't really think you need to. I think that the translucency of the, uh, of the skin tight brings some skin color out, uh, mixes with the color of the appliance, and it's fine. You're going to do a little coloring afterwards if you really need to. I don't think you need to tint. Up to you, your appliance. Take your piece. I'm going to do this on my arm because it's the least hairy part of my body. Uh, you can do this on the back of your neck if you're that skilled. I am not. Uh, mix it up. Stick cup. Apply it. Get it onto the skin. You can apply this and then just wait, but the problem is that skin tight takes about 15 to 20 minutes to cure. So if you do just mix it and then put it right on the skin, especially without a thickener, it's going to take quite a while before it starts to dry. It's going to be a little drippy and you'll be scooping it up and reapplying it. I find it best sometimes if you're not going to use a thickener to actually mix the material walk away for about 10 minutes, then come back and then actually do it. Let it sit in a cup, let it start to cure, and then you can get it on the skin much faster, and then you're done. Once you've got it applied, it's time to paint. You don't really need to. If you've tinted the silicone and your appliance has some color to it, once you apply it, that should be all you need. You can go in and color it. Um, you can use cream-based makeups, store-bought, Ben Nye wheels, but the problem is they don't really stick to silicone. They're just going to lay right on the top of the surface, and they'll kind of just flake off if somebody touches them. Uh, Skin Illustrator and other companies now make these alcohol-based makeups. They mix with 99% alcohol. Fantastic. They do stick to, they don't really stick to silicone, but they blend with silicone. Nothing really sticks to silicone. They also seep into your pores a little bit and get a little bite, so they kind of look like it's a, a color that's in the skin, not just sitting right on top. Fantastic colors, great stuff. Mix it, blend it. 
do a little coloring. What I like to do is color just a little bit on the actual appliance top to give a, to break up some of this monotonous color, to give a little ridges and a little redness and edging. That's all you need. Maybe a little purple or red around the wound to make it look like it's infected or old. Safety precautions, because everyone loves safety. Uh, don't eat clay. Don't bang yourself on the head with the board. Uh, don't drink the alcohol. Don't put silicone in your eye. For the most part, everything here is inert unless you're allergic to it. If you're allergic to alcohol, you're allergic to silicone, you'll have a problem. There's nothing that we're working with that's super crazy. You can wear gloves when you're working with this stuff. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, when you're working with silicone, try and use non-latex gloves. Silicone doesn't like latex either, as well as other things which we'll get into. So try and use the nitrile or the vinyl gloves when you're working with silicones. Other than that, don't poke yourself in the eye with a paintbrush. Uh, everything else is pretty much safe, um, but don't try this at home. Disclaimer, there you go. Once you're finished, removal. The beautiful part about silicone is that it peels right off the skin and it's ready to go for another application. Uh, you can, although the more you use it, you're going to end up with a much thicker edge as it keeps building up layers upon layers of silicone because silicone only sticks to silicone. So once you're done with it, you can take it, put it away, hang it up on a wall, stick it on your forehead and walk around. Whatever you'd like to do, it's your appliance. This has been our Warboy Tutorial Cosplay 201. I'm Spat from Spat Cave Studios. Don't forget, if you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, like the video, comment if there's something else you'd like to see. Check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Studios. Like that page. Post your pictures if you make an appliance or one of the items that we've made. Please post a picture of some of your own work. We'd love to see it. Uh, also, check out some of our other work. And if there's something you want to see, let us know. We love making weird stuff. We'll talk to you soon.